Uh, welcome back to Republican from Michigan, Thaddeus McCotter. Good to see you again, sir. So uh, let me let you explain uh, against the bailout for the banks, uh, but you're for a bailout for the auto industry. Uh, people are saying, hey, if you're going to help one sector, you ought to help them all. Explain for us the difference as you see it. Well, first, the difference is quite clear. You're sending $700 billion to the people who caused the credit markets to freeze up of hardworking taxpayers' money. This credit market freeze up, which was caused by Wall Street and has not been alleviated by the failure of the federal government's bailout program, has necessitated a bridge loan to the auto industry because of the liquidity problems that were caused by others rather than themselves. The big three have been restructuring. I find it odd that Senator Obama, who came from a Midwestern state, our new president-elect, it seems tone deaf to the human cost of that restructuring as he continues to pile on the big three. Thank you so much for joining us, Representative. And I guess, you know, the, the, as someone from New Mexico who's not associated necessarily with Wall Street or Detroit, historically, the thing that always comes back to is I can't figure out why we've allowed these companies to get too big to fail through consolidation, and the new solution is to give them more money to allow them to stay too big to fail. If you're referring to the Wall Street, I agree with you. Wall Street seems to think that they're too big to fail. They were proponents of creative destruction for I'm our also, neighborhoods. I, I am also referring to General Motors, and, and in that case, I'd love to see them broken into ten companies, let each company deal with the unions on their own. Well, I'm, I'm sure that you would. Of course, you don't work in that industry. The big three have been restructuring. The UAW and the auto companies have been restructuring through a continually painful process that has put blue and white collar people out of work, has closed plants like the Wixom plant in my district, has put retirees throughout the country worried about the benefits that they've earned over a lifetime. All they asked was for government to leave them alone and let them go through this process. It was after the failure of the Wall Street bail out, the failure of the credit markets to continue the auto company's short-term loans, and in addition, Washington putting $100 billion of unfunded mandates on them, which has caused them to be where they do not wish to be today. Right, but throughout right. the restructuring process, let me be clear, the auto companies never came to Washington until the mandates were put on them and the Wall Street whiz kids destroyed the credit markets. Well, Congressman, let me ask you then exactly... Um you know, Congress has said that uh, they want the automakers to come back next week with a plan specifically laying out uh, how they would retool their industry um, and their company specifically so they will survive, so they will take this $25 billion, put it to good use and not have to come back this time next year for uh, a handout again. What do you want to see in that plan specifically? You don't pay back a handout, Rebecca. First of all, the bashing of Detroit, which continues to call this a bailout, strikes us as odd. When we see people that we wouldn't even recognize from Citibank and other Wall Street firms getting billions of dollars given to them without ever having okay, to appear I, before granted, Congress or granted, explain the problems a, that they've made. Alone, it is also right. not lost upon me the irony that of all people, the United States Congress is demanding a restructuring plan from anyone to show viability and fiscal responsibility. We all support taxpayer protections. We would like the big three to remind the members of Congress who have not been paying attention as to the human cost and the steps in the restructuring process that have taken place to date and what will have to continue in the future. But the irony of Congress asking and demanding someone to show fiscal viability and integrity it is not lost upon <laughs> Amen me. to that. And I'm certainly, I, as, I, as anybody watching the show knows, I'm not for either of the help that wa that Washington is giving to Wall Street or the automakers in discussion and in the past. And I guess that's what I throw out to you in the very end. You said that the automakers are not asking for anything. They are asking for taxpayers to give them access to capital at below market rates, yes or no? No, I said they were not asking for anything until the failures of Washington and Wall Street led them to come ask for a bridge loan that they will have to repay with interest. Now, hoping that they will repay it, the market doesn't believe they will, or they wouldn't have to come to the Washington. Thank you so Thank much, you Congressman, so much. for joining us. And um, I, I, I under, he's very, very passionate about it, of course, because he represents the state of Michigan. But therein, again, lies the problem too, when you don't say specifically what you're going to do with it, and to answer.